Gentlemen, we're here, 201 Podcast, the second round starting. Boy, it started already. What am I talking about? Gentlemen, how are we? Isn't that exciting? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Sorry. How are you my, guys? My bracket is broken. So I'm trying to remember, who did we all have in the first? Well, we obviously, we all had the Rangers losing and Mike ratioed us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're listening to this, be like Mike. Be a dedicated 201 Podcast listener. That was actually a really good. Uh, that was a really good tweet by you, Alex. Thank you. Get, uh, Thank you. get the, the boys were buzzing. The boys were buzzing. <laughs> I just saw it. I'm just like, of course, Mike would do that to us. Um, like he put the timestamps and everything. I wonder if he uh, had that. I love the accuracy. Probably. Oh yeah, it was great. I, you know, it's really funny if you listen to that. It's like the first one is my prediction, right? And then it's like when I'm like, forget this. This like I'm just. You can tell I'm just having a laugh. But he 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 just uh, he radioed us. So I actually, I'm, I'm wondering sure, since I, I'm pretty sure the next episode or that episode too, I very much kissed the ass of the New York Rangers. I feel like I'm getting, I had them losing in seven games. I feel like the slander I'm that I'm receiving for this is unbelievable, but whatever, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel, does Alex sound quiet all of a sudden to you, or is that just me? No, yeah, Alex, you sound a bit quiet. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that, that's a problem. And a bit buzzy. That's fine. Right. We're going to fix it. You guys keep going. Okay, um, I was gonna get my bracket up, but I just I'm not bothered to go get it. But I, I own, off the top of my head, I'm thinking I got the Panthers right. The Leafs let me down. Um, the the Wild, the Wild really <laughs> let me down. I don't know if you're trying to talk. No, Alex. am I back? I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that sounds better. Yeah. Does it sound better, Daniel? Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. I was six and two. Us uh, were six and two in the first round. By the way, what were you wrong about? Uh, well. Pittsburgh, obviously, and then uh, I had Minnesota winning in seven. They let us all down. They let us all down. That's. It. Did you see who had a perfect first round bracket? By the way, Wayne Gretzky. That was wow. funny. I couldn't believe that. Now, when he has a he has St. Louis losing the Carolina in the finals, I thought it was a bit much, Wayne. But what I find funny is that he actually has Edmonton losing. Yeah, I saw round. that. <laughs> you think they were like Gretzky versus Jernt? Like, sorry, Gretzky jerseys burnt at the stake after that? Knowing uh, knowing the country that we live in, yes. I mean, forget the country. Maybe. Just look at the province. <laughs> no offense, Edmonton. We love you. Actually, I want to just say the province because we like Calgary and that. So I want to love them in the same place. We love Calgary. <laughs> so I've never had a bad interaction with the Flames fan before. No? Honestly, yeah. And did I'm, you an, say- I'm an honorary Flames fan this just- Friday. Going to game game two because game one is tonight. Game two, okay. So you're going. That's to- awesome. Yeah, that's sick. I'm excited. I guess we can. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, some little bits about Arizona because Katie Strang is back at it with a. It's Sean Shapiro, right? There's so many Shapiros out there. I don't want to get them mixed up with the wrong. There's some bad ones out, but like the rider. Um, mm-hmm. Some yeah, some news about Arizona and ASU, which is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, Pete DeBoer has been fired. Uh, Lane Lambert is a new head coach in the aisle. Um, that's a new voice. All right. No, it's not. Um, then we're going to quickly talk about St. Not quickly. We're going to give some good time to Tampa, Florida game one, St. Louis, Colorado game one. We can preview the Rangers in Carolina and the battle of Alberta that is tonight. We can also sort of talk about the fallout of game seven between Dallas and Calgary because Jake Ottinger. Oh my. Uh, what's next for the Penguins? What next for the stars overall? Um, some Leafs end of season stuff and some stuff to do with the Canadians as well. It's not a ton, but um, I think it's going to be a three hour show. Actually. I don't want that. I want to watch some New York game. I won't lie. Um, <laughs> I have to go to Walmart after to pick up some last minute things for the trip. Oh, okay. Well, I, last minute, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just was too dedicated. Oh, to Daniel, my work. I feel that. I feel that. Just, I have my bag packed when mm-hmm. I go to a trip like the night before. Like hundred percent. I I wish man. I had your habits. Uh, I still uh, have to put exactly. stuff in the. Yeah. Man, you don't even want to know how, just what Sunday morning was like for me before I moved in to Gu- way before I moved to Guelph. <laughs> you, you, know, you, guys heard you don't me. even want to know. You don't even want to see all the tabs you have open. I'm like, that's all I need to know. <laughs> that's all I need to know. Anyway, um, I guess we can talk about to start the Battle of Florida. Game one happened. Uh, it was a pretty dominant Tampa win, you can say, especially as the game went on. Tampa didn't have a great start to the game. I think they weren't, they weren't handling the puck the greatest. Um, but Vasilevsky has continued to play well, which is scary. And Nikita Kucherov has showed up. 
which is also unfortunate. All this without Braden Point. It's like, you know, they're the back-to-back Stanley Cup champions or something. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know any other way to put it than Tampa Bay Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning are the back-to-back Stanley Cup champions who have the definition of winning. They are the definition of winning, uh, especially recently. Um, but man, yeah, I, I think you're right there, Adam. Like, and and I think both games last night were actually quite similar um, in, in this sense where the team that ended up winning didn't necessarily start off the greatest. Mm-hmm. I think they, they worked towards that. And if there's a team that knows how to work, it is, again, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like, yes, we'll talk about Andre Vasilevsky because it's Andre Vasilevsky, but the rest of that team is is always on another level. Mm-hmm. For me, I think it's it is like when Alex says, the, "What are the definitions that we're talking about?" For me, it's the definition of just really buying into the system and the next band up. Um, they've been able to what I've said before. They've retooled that bottom six. They have guys that are contributing when someone like Braden Point is out, and they've been able to stay consistent. We talk about momentum, and I think they 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 look like they are the Tampa Bay Lightning. After that Leaf series, yeah, no, they've um, they've really, really woken up. Like you can't really, they're really looking threatening, which is never. It, it's it's a great concern for the Panthers, um, and we'll get to their side of it in, in a second here because I think there's maybe a bit of a troubling pattern starting to come up around the Panthers in this postseason so far. But first, like looking at Tampa, um, you talk about next man up. Corey Perry is normally the bottom six player on that team. I think I, I'm, I'm fairly certain he's not power play one normally, but he was, I think they moved him up. Obviously his Braden points not around. And that's a guy who we all thought he had a big resurgence last year in Montreal, obviously not to the 50 go plateau. We know that he wasn't his prime, but the offensive numbers he had in Tampa Bay this year. And listen, he, listen, that, that, that play where Nikita Kucherov set him up for that goal, that was all Nikita Kucherov. He made Aaron Ekblad look like a fool. Um, but still, Perry finished the goal. And seeing that guy get on the score sheet, we saw Nick Paul, obviously, in Game 7 and what he's been doing. We talked a lot about that third line being sort of taken away um, because of all the, the free agent stuff that happened over the past, our, our last season for the, for the Lightning, obviously. And then they bring in Brandon Hagel for those two first, and it's like, it doesn't really matter. They don't care about those picks because they're going to win. They're going to they're going to three peat. And then you see Perry step on. He's great. And then they bring in Nick Paul. And it was funny seeing Matthew Joseph tweet after Game Seven. He's like, "Oh, that was awesome." But he probably wishes he was on the team still. Um, and what's funny about that new third line is they talked about this during Game Seven that John Cooper has so much faith in them to play them in all situations, and that's exactly what the Yanni Gord line used to do for them. It's sickening how well they replaced that line. Give Julian Breesbaugh general manager of the year. Like I, it, I, I, there's no one else. There's no one else. And I like to say that that line is younger and more cost effective, more control there as well. So it's pretty amazing. And remember, Corey Perry's on the fourth line. People, we know he's old, but it's what's it's Paul Hagel. Who am I forgetting? Who else is on that line? It's bothering you. Just do I'm they put Sorelli down there? Sure. Because I think he's been up think, and down. Yeah, I think he's been up and down. But I think it was Anthony Sorelli first. Or is it Alex Kalorn? <laughs> no, Kalorn's on the first line Ooh. with the uh, stamp goes. When they're healthy, I mean. Because or is he? I think they've shoveled it. I swear Kalorn's been down there before. Right now, it's uh oh, it it would be Ross Colton. Oh, yeah, Ross yeah, Colton. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. When the stars for Tampa were not playing well in that first round series, Ross sure Colton then, Mister Mister Game Five winner last year too. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. Was, yeah. he, was he an Islander before? No, he was drafted by the uh, Lightning. No. You're Ooh, thinking of Ross about? Johnston. Ross Johnston. Okay, and he got like a five-year deal, and we were like, yeah. who the hell was Ross Johnston? Oh, yeah, Ross- he was uh, protected, I know. Remember that? At the expansion draft. Yes. Yeah, Jordan Eberle. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Bad team. That's awkward. I didn't say oh, anything. Sorry. To- <laughs> 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 you got me off guard there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Tampa are pretty good. Um, That's crazy. The Panthers, they still haven't scored a power play goal. So I swear during the broadcast, they mentioned during that one of their power plays, unless it was their first one, they had a shot that was within like the, the high danger area towards the slot, I think. 
Uh, and it was, I think they said it was the first time this playoffs they've had that high danger of shot on the power play. Um, people have been saying that maybe Washington set the blueprint and Tampa slowed that game down, especially game one, and it sort of really went on the Panthers here. I think the, like a key for the rest of the series is really seeing if Andrew Burnett can adapt because I think that guy low-key is actually fighting for a job right now. Ooh, that's a that that's an interesting. I don't necessarily disagree um, with that. And, and listen, like I did have him as my coach of the year, but I think we've seen maybe not in the NHL, but I think uh, Toronto wise, I think we've seen a coach win coach of the year and get fired. Uh, Dwayne Casey, obviously. Mm. Uh, after, I was about to see who are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, Dwayne Casey after, I believe it was the same summer they traded for Kawhi. Was that the same summer? Yeah, it was know? the same summer. Yeah, yeah. they made those uh, wholesale changes, I guess we'll put it like that. But you're right. I think especially on the power play, that's where he's going to have to adapt. And and if I think if we're looking back at that Toronto series too, where especially later on where – Tampa Bay was able to shut down uh, Toronto's power play and, and look at where both those teams are in terms of at the end of the regular season, Toronto's first Tampa Bay is our Florida is fifth. These are some of the best power plays in the league and they a, they were able to shut them down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I think you're right on that part in terms of if Andrew Burnett does need, in, in, especially on uh, on the power play, needs to adapt because I don't, this isn't the regular season where you can keep trying and trying and trying and trying and eventually you'll, you'll hopefully eventually you'll break out of that slump. It's the playoffs where it comes down to seven games if mm-hmm. it gets there. I, I don't know who, I don't know which assistant coach essentially runs their power play because I don't think, who was the guy that went from Florida to Tampa, Florida, Toronto, and then I think he went to Seattle? Or am I miss? Dave what was his name? No, not no, Hackstall. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Um, I can't. McFarland. Yes, yes, Paul McFarland. Paul McFarland. I yeah, because he I went. I don't know. He, I don't know who the was, new McFarland is. But. He he went from Kingston mm-hmm. to Toronto. No, Kingston to Florida to Toronto, back to Kingston, yeah, that was and a- then to Seattle. Yeah. That's so strange. Um, but like it just I even more just extending overall five on five play because okay. it's just like like uh, again, they came back in, in those last three games against the Caps. And uh, like I, I heard the Florida commentators in those games because the first round still had a lot of the, the local commentators, which I wish we had altitude for the Colorado game so badly. Um, but like the Panthers guys saying they said we couldn't do it in the postseason. Yeah, but that was against Ilya Samsonov and the aging caps where Nick Backstrom may retire. I just, they have to, I'm not saying that the Panthers are toast here. I'm not trying to say that at all. Um, But I'm just saying like they're, you know, it it moves so quickly in the playoffs. They just, um, just Burnett, man, listen, I'm just saying, because there's a lot of coaching candidates out there. I'm just saying maybe he's there. He won't be the only candidate if he doesn't do a great job because we talked about like they have traded a lot of futures, not in terms of a great like A plus prospects, but all those first round picks. And they're gonna feel that in a couple of years. And by then they need to win. You know, and that's that's what I mean. Is he he just overall this is the first step, and you know what it's gonna tell us a lot about him, how he adjusts, especially against a, a guy like John Cooper. I mean, talk about wicked competition to face. I, I understand, and I I, I kind of partially agree with what you're saying i think it's because he is on that interim basis and when he did take over there was still that immediate success that they were running with but like any team they deal with ups and downs and i think that brunette has dealt with more ups and downs this season than that we we were able to see with joel quenville and it'll be interesting because it's it's a conversation i think we're gonna have with the way this panthers team's just emerged and become the last few years because I don't think they're going to have that same type of patience. And I don't think they should depend, especially with the star players they do have of whether or not they're going to keep things as they are, and then just keep going back and forth with it. So it's Mm -hmm. really, for me, it's going to really depend on how well he does in this series, like whether or not they lose, if he keeps it close, 
I think there's that possibility. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't mean to take away from him. You mentioned the Quindle stuff. I mean, what a raucous sort of circumstance to come into. I think that I give a lot of credit. We compare to a team we care a lot about, like a lot on this show, and that being Montreal, Ducharme. The regular season, like, like nothing changed with the Habs. Um, and then look how that ended up. When Brunette has come in and he led into a president, he beat Colorado for the president's trophy. Like that says something. Like uh, credit there. I'm just saying, you know, it's uh, you've lost the first battle. You know what I mean? Now you got to win the next four or four of the next six. All right. That's the game plan. Uh, come on now. That's what we want. Um, do you guys agree with the call that took away uh, Florida's what? You know, no, I was going to say, how many points did Tampa Bay get in their season where they, the like they're, they're just absolute dominant season? Uh, all I remember was it 62 wins? I don't know how many OTL. 2019, they, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 2018-19. Because the Florida Panthers had 122 points. That's not bad. And oh, Colorado, seeing- Colorado had 119. Like they weren't uh, far behind. But I, I feel like that's eerily close to what the Tampa Bay Lightning had in 2019-2018-19. Remember that Colorado started off pretty poorly too. So that probably yeah. um when like in you saw it once Brunette took over the Panthers could have slid and instead they they kept going. But I think yeah it so, didn't help that Colorado came out very slow. Tampa Bay had 128 points, 62 wins. Oh, not bad. Uh Florida had 122 points in 58 wins. I'm just saying, like, they had a hell of a year. Like, there's no uh, yeah. no doubt about that. Listen, like, the people calling the Panthers frauds, I, I just don't agree with that. A lot's been made about all their comeback wins. And, yeah, you never want to fall down 4 or 5 nothing to the Devils. And we talked about that at the time. It's like mm-hmm. there needs to be a bit of... You know, we give the we need to get the Panthers as much like as much grief as, as we do Toronto, obviously. Um, and listen, but that's not gonna. You don't trip and fall your way into the President's Trophy and the amount of exciting games and, and competitive games that they had. Um, like it, it, it's a well constructed team. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I just think there is there's some credit to be given there, but like they're, they're not done. They, I, it, it's going to be a great series. I'm just waiting. You know what I'm waiting for? The vi- the violence. The <laughs> violence that we saw between this team last year, these teams last year. Where is the violence, damn it? It's coming. Carter Verhage, Revenge Tour Part 2. Uh, you, you know what? We didn't talk about, by the way, just how he was their best player in round yeah. one, by the way. Like, Carter Verhage, I mean. I'm not surprised. People, remember when people were like, ah. It's just because he plays on the top line. Daniel, I don't know about that. Daniel has been waiting for this moment for years. Yes, yes. <laughs> Since his Toronto Marlies days, even though he played like two games with the organization. <laughs> but what can we look back and say that's a, that's like that was Lou Lamorello's first, I think, his first big trade for the Leafs. So yeah, I think the Leafs lost that trade. Oh, I mean, I mean yes. Yeah, yeah, I think the context. Context. Yeah, it's yeah. important. I mean, not yeah. It's it's like man, yeah. was would he get a shot? It's, it's kind of like the William Carlson thing. Like who would have, excuse me? Like who do you gonna who are you gonna blame for William Carlson turning into a forty goal scorer for you? Like no one could have saw that coming. Even though I'm pretty sure the Columbus Blue Jacket organization member on Twitter was like, "That was me." Then he had to like delete the tweet. It was a whole thing. It wasn't. It was a whole because they protected Josh Anderson over him. I remember. And then they traded him for Domi. And then Domi got traded for scraps. And Josh Anderson's great. Thank you for that, bud. I remember I was so mad about that trade. Did you give him a third, too? And uh, yeah, yeah, sweet, Josh Anderson. Having a good good world championships, even though I haven't watched it because who cares about the world championships? I like the world championships. Have you I been watching it? Yeah, I've been watching them. I have never once, once watched. I don't think I ever will. Really? I always enjoy them. I, you know what the thing is? I, I think that the, the issue is, is that, and this is my own thing, not necessarily uh, the reason, but I think it's just such a long season that mm-hmm. like once the Leafs are eliminated, it's not that I'm not going to watch these games. It's just, I don't have the, I barely had the energy to get through. The only reason round one was like, 
I had the energy was because the Leafs were involved. I just don't have that same energy. It's such a long season. And it's also been the longest two and a half years. It's been rough. It, yeah. is, uh, it has been long. It has been long. Uh, I'll tell you, though, and um, I always forget the Twitter account. The Jets fan, her name is like Ava something. I always reference her Twitter account. It was like she had this tweet about all the people who cheer for bad teams really recognize how much fun it is to then watch the playoffs. And even off of the finals appearance, this season has just killed enjoyment and watching good hockey mm-hmm. as a hats fan. And then, like, I've watched Colorado, and I'm just like, this is the – when I was talking to Will last night – is I listen to what I love about this and last year's playoffs is when the playoffs are on, I talk to Will a lot. It's, it's a good time. And he was just, we were just gushing over Colorado together. <laughs> He's, oh, they're just so good. Oh my God. They, no one's going to, oh, seriously, it, seriously, they're so good. If we don't get a Colorado Tampa final this year, something has gone horribly wrong. We should have gotten it last year. And then the apps choked. By the way, Nazem Kadri, not suspended. Wow. Is this Reliving 1996. Season? Great. What? Reliving 1996. I'm confused. If the Panthers and the uh, Avs go to the finals. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Solid reference there, Daniel. Um, but yeah, I also what Kadri, every time he spins to the playoffs. Not uh, every time. Not every time. There was one year where. Just he- like the last yeah, few that's years. That's what yeah. I'm trying to think. It was the year when they lost to Dallas. Colorado did. I don't think he got suspended. Uh, yes. Mm hmm. And yes, then obviously the last year, year he last year he destroyed Justin Falk. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that was that, I think that was the worst one. That I think it was well, also or the revenge stuff in that Bruins game when he like the red miss after Marlow got hit. But those yeah, were like yeah. like the Falk one was like blindside. There was no way to defend it. No. Yeah. But what I will say is he didn't get suspended in 2012, 2013. Ah, uh, that that doesn't that's that doesn't when he was almost a point per game player in the short end season. That doesn't. That matter. is true, Daniel. That's a good That's, point. This is, that is true. Um, but let's focus on St. Louis, Colorado. Yes, game. let's get back. Um, so St. Louis, I think we're lucky to uh, have lost in overtime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After that, that slow start, and you can maybe see that's a bit of rust being um, brushed off of the apps. Um, I think I think that's fair to say because obviously they've been waiting a while for everyone else. Um, but the Blues get the early lead, and then after that, the abs were just. I think they hit four posts. Hold on. I've got some stuff here. Uh, obviously, in overtime, they were 13 and 0 in the shootout. I'm mean, sorry, um, it, 13 and 0 were the shots in overtime. There, I, I've lost it here, but their shot like attempts were insane. It was actually amazing. Like Bennington, great game, and he was the only reason that St. Louis were in it. It was hilarious to watch. Oh yeah, that game could have been a whole lot worse. I think. Uh, for the Blues, and I think it was weird. They had this, uh, I I mean, I guess if you want, we can call it either Colorado had a slower start or the Blues had a had a better start, but um, I, I don't know really what happened. I think after the first period, uh, St. Louis just lost it. To me, it seemed like St. Louis lost steam, and Colorado just came in and swept it up, and I think you're right. Like the one saving grace, oops, the hit the table there. The one saving grace for the team was Jordan Bennington, who's probably on that team gone the most crap over the last, over especially over this season for sure. No, not from us, obviously. We've never no, 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 thinking yeah, about Jordan yeah, Bennington. Yeah, yeah. That, that, no, no, no. Not at all. Um, no, yeah, I didn't do anything. It was pretty crazy to see this game where the Blues really did just cave in in terms of effort i think for jordan bimington um i have the stat here that in overtime the shots were 13 to 0 for the avalanche only 40 seconds of that was on the power play by the way yeah and i don't know what to expect in game two like is bimington gonna have to have another game like that to just kind of keep them in it because i really felt that what we said before like the blues in a way they've they've kept the swagger going they they've been able to be a lot better from what we thought that okay this team's done from that core of winning it all and Mm -hmm. i still think that they'll find the momentum there like i'm still a big robert thomas fan but oh yeah he's good they just did they felt they looked overwhelmed you know what what i just kind of hit me that you know what probably has not helped the blues when they've looked kind of mad the last two years uh vlad tarasenko (laughs) 
and his shoulder not being right. <laughs> I just kind of yeah. thought of that. Um, like, yeah, it, when you take away 30, 30 goals and like 70 points, it doesn't yeah. help. A hundred percent. And I think that, well, Daniel, I think you're spot on. Like saying, like this isn't when Colorado goes up against Na- uh, Nashville and Nashville just does not look good. And it's like, well, that's probably going to be the series. That's not the case here with St. Louis because it's St. Louis. Uh, this is the same for the most part, I, I think. Uh, the same core kind of that won the cup. Um, I mean, minus Petrangelo. But again, then you add Tori Krug, who has won a cup. Um and they, they're going to keep themselves in the series. This isn't a no-name team by any means. Mm-hmm. They're, you know what? Just to quickly go back to Colorado a second, we can yeah. circle back to St. Louis. Yep. Is a lot's been made about what are the Avs going to do if they ever sort of face a bit of adversity here? Sorry, uh, what the Avs are going to do if they ever get slapped back, like that Vegas series, right? Mm-hmm. And they had that poor start, obviously, and then just went full steam ahead, right? Then... You know, um, the Blues tie it up, um, you know, and they don't quite score to end the period on that power play. By the way, Braden Shen looked like he was going to kill someone. Um, credit to the refs for not calling a, a second call on him. I like I like that they didn't go after him there. And they just kept going. They did not let their foot off the gas. And that's been the criticism of the ups. And I'm really, really happy to see that. Going to St. Louis, you know, we, we said in our predictions – that the, like because they were playing Minnesota, and we all had I had ah the oh, the oh the wild perceived faith in the wild that we had that the Blues could either have gone out in the first round or they were going to go deep. You see, they have that championship core of you know obviously O'Reilly, Tarasenko, and that. But what's made the Blues so special is the emergence of and like people always talk about actually getting ice time the Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo, and it's just a secondary offense that I think honestly is probably better than when they won the cup. The defense is obviously flawed, and also I should probably have said, besides Tarasenko not being healthy for those couple of years, getting used to not having Olympic level Alex Petrangelo is probably tough too. Yeah, and Bennington yeah. wasn't good for a couple of years and was kind of bad in the regular season, and you know all that kind of stuff. You didn't um, mention Habs legend Scandella. Yeah, Scandella. I mean, you know, I I, didn't, I thought of mentioning him earlier, but I'm like, no, we don't need to do that. No, I can't, I can't be doing that. I can't be doing that. But um, I mean, yeah, they're a good team. They're a good team. It's just the Abs are. I think they're going to give them more. Like the Blues aren't going to get swept, no. but you know the Abs are just looking otherworldly. Like McKinnon has just been. I'm. I'm not going to gush over McCarr. Um, Sam Gerrard scoring was big because he's sort of been very criticized this season. Was happy for him, but like the Abs defense and just the way they move the puck generally on, on on the power play. I've talked about this before. I don't think any other team is like that in the league. You know what I mean? Is as good as Tampa's defense is, um, just at least the movement and what that defense can do in Colorado was like no other in the league, in my opinion, at least. Even though Victor Hedman is obviously Victor Hedman. <laughs> <laughs> we know how good Victor Hedman is, but oh, goodness gracious. Like McCarr and Byron and Gerard, it's like, uh, and Josh Manson is, is obviously isn't that like offensive monster, mm-hmm. but Josh Manson scoring. Oh, it's Noted sniper, Josh oh, Manson. Gosh, man. Yeah, exactly. When I saw that, I thought of you, Daniel. I was like, there Thank you, you go. Josh. Um, <laughs> that point you make about St. Louis there, I thought was uh, was interesting because there, if St. Louis loses this series, it's not going to be because St. Louis folded. No. It's going to be because Colorado um, was able to, like you said, push back continuously throughout this entire series. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they need because the games are going to get harder. Um, <laughs> they're going to, they're, they're not going to always be able to use that worldly speed all the time. And I think that's what they need. Like we, we talk about revenge tours. We talk about, I think this is just like a redemption kind of thing for Nathan McKinnon and company that they have, they like, they, they led the West again and then we we get to the playoffs now and it's like okay listen are you gonna are you gonna bow it against a, a lower seat again i think that they had the best vegas odds right now i believe but makes sense they they're a team that i think they still have so much to prove and nathan mckinnon knows it so that's why he's just playing out of his mind 
you know what also helps? I, I am because athletes are notorious for kind of finding things to go against. Like Tory Krug is apparently still uses this thing of people think he's he's undersized and he shouldn't have made it. When we all know that Tory Krug, I think he said this in the Thirty Two Thoughts or it may have been Thirty One Thoughts podcast at the time or interview. And we all know how good Tory Krug is. Like you don't, you've made it, but athletes still use that, right? What I wonder about is. I can't remember what year it was exactly, but the year they finished second and their PDO suggested they weren't that good. It was Patrick Wall's first year, I think. I think Varlama was a Vesna finalist. And I think they lost in the first round or first or second. And obviously that wasn't the abs as we know them, but McKinnon would have been around, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I yeah. wonder if he still thinks about that. I could, or maybe was that no? I was about to say is that how they got McKinnon? But like no, because they made the playoffs. I'm gonna double check it, but I'm fairly sure McKinnon would have been around for that. And I wonder if there's just another little wrinkle in there. Also, it's got to be nice for him to be like first round, Duchesne, you want it out? I'm coming after you. Second round, Stasny O'Reilly, what's wrong with Colorado? I'm gonna come after you now. I just I the like the famous Michael Jordan. I took it personally. I took it personally. I've been using that line up. <laughs> whole heck of a lot lately but yeah this is again like I, I feel like i i look at this series in a similar light as maybe i look at the um other big series that happened in the first round you know toronto tampa uh pittsburgh new york minnesota st louis like these were never they're not going to be, and this one included, is not going to be an easy series for anybody involved because of because of the the characters and the players involved. Uh, St. Louis themselves, like <laughs> look at the circumstance of the year they won the cup and what they came back from, and you know, look at the pieces and a lot of them are still the same. Like I was saying before you look at Colorado where it was year after year, it's the same thing. You're running into adversity and you kind of push back a little bit and that, and now we're at this point where it's, we need to win this round. And mm -hmm. both teams I think are thinking it because yeah, Yes, St. Louis has the young guys, the Robert Thomases, the Jordan Kairos. I, I mean, I think we can put Pavel Buchnevich in there too. He's relatively younger. But they also have the other guys there too, which similar to Dallas, the aging core, uh, Krugish, uh, Tarasenko, uh, O'Reilly. Like it's, I, I, I definitely think for them, that's, that's a factor. Um, by the way, so Nathan McKinnon's rookie year was 2013-14. Uh, he had 63 points, pretty good. One of the colder that year. Fourth in ab scoring that year. Head coach Patrick Waugh, 52-22. Um, then 0-8, I guess they still have ties for some reason. Hockey DB, and they put zero there. And they lost in seven in the first round to Minnesota. So that it was that year. It was his rookie year. Great regular season. And then just out of my curiosity, let's see, how did he do in that postseason? Uh, 10 points in seven games. No, no. Okay. Wow. McKinnon started hot. They kind of like was quiet for a few years. Wow. That's weird. Um, and what's really funny, guess who one of the assistant coaches was in Colorado that year? Dominic Ducharme. No, 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 oh. no. His first NHL job was in Montreal. Uh, Jared Bettner. Uh, no, I want, I want to say he came from the AHL and then straight to head coach. Okay. okay. Patrick dipped. Uh, Andre Tournier. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm actually very surprised by that. Current Arizona uh, Arizona head coach. Uh, which oh, is, I thought the uh, I thought the transition was coming there. Uh, no, 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 no. Unfortunately, no. And the Arizona. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's right there, isn't it? Uh, it, can, it was. It was. Yeah. The second year. I mean, gentlemen, it's wild to think about that, isn't it, Mister Chornier, Coyotes head coach? Kind of like it's wild. Not Minnesota wild. Um, kind of like it's wild anytime I see Katie Strang's name out there with an article. I'm like, oh, it's the Coyotes again, no. uh, which is just lovely to see. So um, the amazing Katie Strang and the amazing Sean Tapiro have once again come together to put a great piece on the Arizona Coyotes out there. Um, 
Uh, it's not as detailed and as, as sort of humorous as some of the other stories of Arizona to do with, uh, we need to raise money. Uh, let's get towels and howling. No, it's none of that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to read you guys some. I won't read the whole thing because go and read this on The Athletic. Great stuff. Um, <laughs> within their agreement to play at Arizona State next season, the Arizona Coyotes and their owner, Alex Morello, will be required to avoid notoriety or the team could be forced to look for another place to play. The Athletic re- um, reviewed the venue license agreement between Ice Arizona Hockey and AVG Facilities, which was signed by Coyotes President Xavier Gutierrez and Francesca Bodie, OVG's President and Business Development. Uh, uh, the President of Hockey. Oh, my God. President of Business Development. Say that fast three times. It's not a tongue twister. I just can't read. Um, according to the document, if the Coyotes or Morello become the subject of adverse publicity, contempt, scandal, or ridicule for violating, quote, widely held principles of public morality, failure to conduct its business affairs with a high degree of integrity and honest and or failing acts as good corporate um, corporate citizens, Arizona State can get out of the deal with the Coyotes. Now, you may be asking. There's that's more? Little, I mean, just, <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, Craig Morgan did say apparently this is normal. Um, but this is all linked, or they say in the article, if you haven't been following the Coyotes the past couple of years, obviously the, the Mitchell Miller stuff, which was very serious drafting. I, I don't know what to call him, um, but you know, that player after what he did, um, you go read that article and all that situation is really important to read. Obviously, um, a li- bit lighthearted stuff besides that is they were late to pay their taxes to Glendale. Um, and, you know, they're playing. I mean, they've been the laughing stock of the league for the past couple of years. Let's be honest. There's the, there's rarely a good headline around the Coyotes. You, um, you've missed the, mo- the, the probably the bigger one. Which one? They lost their first round pick last <laughs> year and their second round pick the year before that because of shenanigans. Because of what was it? Illegally testing prospects. Yes. Allegedly Barrett Hayden. Uh, really? Yeah, because it was during like they said it was that draft year, but they won't name the player. Well, it's it's really funny too that um <laughs> there were rumors he wanted out. Mm, which I wonder is, why. Uh, interesting. Um, along big, with this, sorry, go ahead. Dan. Sorry, just a big thing here we didn't hear about the napkin prices. What? Well, <laughs> just the napkin prices. Oh yeah, when they were like they were apparently gloating about it. There's another Katie Strang article by the way people that were referring to that goes into like the Morellos coming in and kind of how cheap they are and it just not being a great place to work. It's it's it all sort of maybe contributes to this. Now, but again, Craig Morgan has said that I'll read the exact tweets in a second because there's something else I want to get to here. Uh, another part of the article. Uh, Arizona, like all NHL franchises, is counting on sports gambling as a revenue source in the future. Uh, as a sports net, stop showing me commercials, please. Uh, Morello also owns a casino in Las Vegas, and the Coyotes already own one of the state licenses to run wagering op- uh, operations. The Coyotes, however, will not be able to run these operations inside ASU's arena, agreeing that any use of the facility or any part of ASU campus for gambling is prohibited. That ban extends to a half mile zone around the campus. The Coyotes may make a request for an event wagering facility within that zone if regulations change during the 2020, sorry, during the 2022 Arizona legislative session, which runs through June 24th, according to the agreement. There's more there, like beer sales and that, aka everything, like the lifeblood of money. Um, because we've talked about this before. The drinking age in the states is lower than it is here in Canada. It's I mean, higher, like it's, it's higher. It's, uh, yeah, sorry, it's it's twenty one there. Quebec is eighteen. Ontario is nineteen. I don't know what the other provinces are, but I as think an example, Alberta is also eighteen. I just know France is sixteen. I know that's not in Canada, but I just remembered that. I I have had a long long day, and I, I just the. I, I want to rip into this so bad because I w- I've been thinking about this. I sent it to you yesterday, right? Mm. I send you that uh, good. Uh, what was what was the exact name for it? The good mm. behavior uh, clause, which is mm. normal. Okay. Yeah. 
I, I always see people and including myself, including the three of us, we always, you know, obviously crap on the market and yes. okay, fine. And, and I do think, but I do think things have grown. Like hockey has grown in, in Arizona. Like, I, I think that's a factual statement. What I, ha- I've now begun to realize slowly. And I'm finally think I'm on board with that, with this is is this is the NHL's fault. The NHL have not put the Arizona Coyotes in a situation to succeed ever mm-hmm. because they keep bringing in owners time and time again who, Adam, like you said, if, if there's the story out there about the Morellos being cheap, sorry, I don't know if that's what this organization needs right now. This organization needs someone who can, who like Winnipeg, who's okay with bleeding a little bit of money every year right now, Yeah, but they've never been given that. It's just been constant problem after problem. And then the NHL is like, but we want to keep hockey in Arizona fine, but give them the, the, the proper owner that's going to allow Arizona hockey to thrive. Which is crazy to me because remember, um, it was a. Uh, I'm, I'm calling this John Chaika's last stand <laughs> because do you remember when he kept doing all those deals to try to try to get all these offensive players and try to push the team towards a a playoff spot? And you know, they they did they did succeed to a certain extent, but when he left, that you know they had the Phil Kessel, they had Taylor Hall, Antti Rotman, Darcy Kemper were still there. Um, it looked like they were treading towards that but ever since that incident happened and then the draft happened and this new ownership group it just kind of seems that they're just treading water right now um i don't know if you mentioned it adam but it was also at asu that the coyotes are not even going to have their own logo okay on oh, the okay. Ice. one more thing i wanted to mention i'm gonna okay. get in a second because craig morgan also sort of clarified some stuff about that okay uh, okay I also think there is some blame to go to ownership groups, not just the NHL, because I think we I think we talked about this with Chase all that time ago. Um, and I think the Morellos have tried to work on this, but there's also been criticism in the past where the Coyotes have not done a great job of reaching out to the community, which is, and I think that's something I think the Panthers have been criticized before too, but I think they've started working on it. Um, don't quote me on that, but... That's been another big criticism, right? Is you got to reach out. Um, like, I know it's Glendale and that, but like, you know, it's, it's like, it, there's been no sort of effort on the Coyotes' parts either. It's, and listen, the league's never been good at growing the game either. Mm-hmm. Um, but so just one, one thing is so there was a thing going out there that apparently um, the Coyotes couldn't put their logo on the ice. There's a, it's kind of a bit mixed. So Craig Morgan in the same sort of, he did a thread of quote tweeting his stuff. Asked for some interpretations that the Coyotes won't be able to put their logo at center ice at ASU's multi-purpose arena. That is incorrect. Both teams' identities will be reflected. All that is agree. Uh, all that the agreement stipulates is that the Coyotes cannot alter anything ASU puts on the ice. Which oh, okay. is sort of, you know what I mean? There's a bit of, mm, in there. that's not a very straight line, but I, I don't know if they're going to do like a Kachina Sun Devils mix up, which that could be pretty sick, but it, it still says that, yeah, they can't alter so they, because they don't own it, which is embarrassing. They should do, I think it's the best alternative. Just put an A in the middle. Just put like a collegiate A. Just put an A, yeah. Just put a cactus there, just a bar. purple, purple A with a cactus on, just a bar. Mm-hmm. Just not on the jerseys. Oh, yeah, you hate fun. You didn't watch. <laughs> did you do you like Wiley Coyote and like Looney Tunes? Did you watch that when you were a kid? I did. And you didn't. And you, what are you doing here? I don't know. I like um, the Kachina. I just don't like the re- retro reverse. I like to just like make that clear. I, I like the original Kachina jerseys. I just don't like the retro reverse. Uh, of course you don't. Of course you don't. Can't wait to see if everyone's saying Retroverse is coming back next year. Enter the yeah. Retroverse. Enter the Retroverse. Still yeah, seeing spoilers watch. about Doctor Strange. Great. I, you know, I didn't watch it yet either. Yeah, you have. No, I actually haven't yet. I you have. haven't? I, have. I haven't, oh. yeah. I oh. mean, 
I have time tomorrow. Like when I get into Calgary, maybe I'll find a maybe theater. Maybe you should well find a theater and go watch it. Yeah. 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 Looks fun. Looks really fun. Um, I just realized I, did I spoil something for you by sending it into the group chat that one time? Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. I've seen it I, everywhere. I'm very sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, I've it's also like um not gonna say who it is. It was under but um it's because uh people are use are running with it because of it's an office meme. Yeah, I I'll, I'll tell you my thought about it after the episode. I, okay, I, I, just, I couldn't take it seriously. You know what I mean? Like, it, he was too like okay, that all character right, in that. All, all, all right, right, all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So the yeah, we talked about that. That Rangers Carolina tonight. Um. All the memes about Georgiev and uh, D'Angelo has been pretty funny. I won't lie. <laughs> Um, you know, first you got rid of the Bruins, now we got to get rid of Tony D'Angelo. Uh, I have the Rangers winning because I just don't want Tony D'Angelo to advance anymore. It's a weird thing because I don't want Kreider to win either, but it's like at least Kreider, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it, but like you know, Tony D, it's Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> I need to explain why. I was about to ask him, like, personally, for you, what is the lesser of two evils? Well, Chris Kreider seems like a good dude. When yeah. Tony D'Angelo does not, you know. Yeah, I can agree with that. It's simple um, as that. I, you know, I just, it's really awkward seeing Habs fans root for the Rangers because I'm like, oh, but Kreider, stop it. It's funny because I'm backtracking so much now for this series because all that stuff I said, and again, apologies to Mike, that <coughs> if the Rangers make it to the conference finals, <laughs> this goes against everything what I said. Like, they're not ready to make this type of run. They have so many other young guys that they're going to be important pieces later, but I'm not seeing it right now. And I guess I'm completely going against that because I'm thinking I'm probably going to pick the Rangers. It's an uphill. Listen, the series is an uphill battle. Like this is not an easy road for the Rangers. Like I haven't looked at the odds, but I'm assuming betting odds. It's Carolina by a landslide. I would assume. Yeah. I I just, I don't know if I agree with that. I think this is a lot closer series Carolina by a landslide. I would assume is the betting line on it. I mean, at least. Let me check it. I'll check I, it. Check it, but like, no, 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 I, no, we don't. Don't have to put the Listen, whatever. I believe it. I believe that that's what the odds would be, but I, I, I don't agree with it. I, I a hundred percent think this is a closer series than most people um, would say. Because again, so let's start with Carolina. Yeah. I just double checked. Frederick Anderson was not on the ice uh, this morning or yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's a big loss. Yes. Anti Ranta has performed to standards and, you know, they even survived having their third string goalie there. But again, you're coming up against a Rangers team who let's call it defied the odds and beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, defied our odds and beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, And they did it with, especially in the later later end of the series where maybe Igor Shosturkin wasn't uh, up to Igor Shosturkin standards that we saw in the regular season. Yeah. Um, I, de- I, I, again, like I, I think this is going to be because they, th- what we talked about in the regular season was there was this reliance on Igor Shosturkin. And I think like I was saying uh, a few episodes ago, that died down a little bit towards the end of the season. You know, obviously Shishirk is probably getting a little tired. And I, I think we're starting to see that in the playoffs a little bit too, but they still won. And I get it th- who they were yeah. playing, but, and having their third string goalie in there. But what we know about Pittsburgh is they're also never an easy out too. Like we were talking about before. Yeah. Again, I still think this is a closer series than most people might be saying. So remember how last year was like Tavares got hurt, Shifley got suspended, Chandler Stevenson. Is it this year? Is it going to be like it was Louis Deming? Jari was was hurt for Game Seven. Ah, Anderson wasn't wasn't healthy. I wonder if that's going to be the the, the thing people follow New York is because it, it it is like respect to anti rant. It's anti ranta. It's anti ranta. I mean, you know, anti ranta. Yeah, he's been good. Well, he's been solid before like he put up those weird numbers that were pretty high when he was with Arizona and he's a journeyman but I don't know there's a bit of confidence I have with it I'm still picking the Rangers for this but it's not like they had to dig super deep and find like no disrespect to Louis Domingue but it's not like 
they put in a Louis Domingue type of player to replace Frederick Anderson? Um, listen, we'll see. It should be a good season. Mike, get your uh, get the timestamps now, and then you can you can put it out there. Battle of Alberta, baby. Tonight I'm game excited. one, Edmonton Calgary. I was watching that game seven, right? And I could not scream enough that if Calgary had lost that game to Dallas, I may have never forgiven them because we have this now. We will talk about Jake Ondra in a second, um, but we're going to preview this first. I think the Flames are going to steamroll the Oilers. Wow. <laughs> okay. Because okay. Here's, here's the thing. Okay. 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 Listen. Listen. No offense to the Kings. I like me some Phil. It was the Kings. You know what I mean? It's, it's the Kings. Um, no, if, you know, it's the Kings. They didn't have a defense and all that. The, the Flames are... I saw this this tweet that was like, imagine how happy the Flames are going to be when they go from Jake Ottinger to... I know he's been good. He The third highest goal saved uh, above expected. Third highest is Mike Smith. But going from Ottinger to Mike Smith. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I like listen, McDavid is gonna win him some games because it McDavid and Dry but Dry Sidle's not a hundred percent. And I just I just think the Flames are such a better team. Like I really do. Uh, you bring up Jake Andre there. I'm not I'll save the stat for, for when we get there, but you talk about goal saved above expected, and you okay, say we, that we, Mar- 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 Smith is third. Jake Ottinger is so like I'm not even going to bring it up yet, but yeah, you're right. Jake Ottinger to Mike Smith is a the Flames must be just and, loving it. And guess who is second in goal saved above expected? Who is that? Jacob Markstrom. <laughs> but I it's the it's the it's the difference between those two. I think that's insane. Oh so yeah. I we'll get to we'll get to that after. But man, I don't think they're going to steamroll. Uh, Edmonton, I have Calgary winning, but and I and that goes back to what I said earlier this season when they traded for Tyler Toffoli. I said I thought the Flames had the best chance of winning the cup of a Canadian team. Uh, mm. and I still stand by that. They have great goaltending. Uh, I think they have a good defense and they've done it with some some of it without Chris Tanev. Um and I think they have a deep, deep, deep forward core. And that's yeah, why they um, for me, um, and like one thing I like to say first for Jake Ottinger is the respect he's given now. I think we, we forget he was a first round pick goalie. He's still pretty young. Yeah, and... hey, yes, he was picked right before him. <laughs> Ryan Paling. <laughs> and the way I kind of feel with it is there was so much of the Spencer Knight talk for so long. Yep. That... Oh, I'll hear it. Oh, here's no. Dad. I'm not comparing. I'm just saying. Here he is. Speaking both... of Spencer Knight, did you actually see who signed in, in Nashville? The I other did. Day? Our, our boy Yaroslav Askarov. <laughs> but anyways, uh, keeping it to the American goalies, um, I think it just Ottinger had that breakout that I think Spencer Knight's also going to have later on, where it's just he kept going back and forth between the NHL and the AHL. And then when they finally give him the reins, he showed what he was able to do. So that was a gem for the stars. Um, But yeah, looking into this series, Mike Smith, inconsistent, um, was better in round one. But the way I see it too is that he's a known commodity to playing for the Flames. And it just when I look at that Flames lineup, we talked about you mentioned Tyler Toffoli. I also mentioned that it's just been able to find all these guys that you know they they've been able to elevate the guys who have been doing well, like Elias Lindholm and Johnny Goudreau. These guys who have been bouncing back, but at the same time, they have those complementary guys that just play the Daryl Sutter style so well that I don't think Edmonton is going to be able to counter that when the speed is not there all the time. Listen, Elliot Freeman sort of made the thing of Dallas make games coin flips. Um, I just don't see the same structure in that with the Oilers. And like, listen, I like Jay Woodcroft. I just don't think the roster is enough. Uh, by the way, saw a really funny tweet that was like, the, the Oilers are paying Milan Lucic to play against them. Uh, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Um, but it's, it's just, I'm happy you mentioned Johnny Goudreau. 
because like after game five, I thought he was the best player on the but except Dodger, he was the best best skater on the ice was Johnny Goudreau. Like I think the fact that he got that, I think Johnny Goudreau exercised a lot of playoff demons getting that game seven goal. Um, like I legit am very happy for him. Uh, Will never doubted him. Obviously, never <laughs> once did he. Never once. I didn't see a tweet about Johnny Goudreau. Oh, it was, he never. Week. He never criticized scoring in Calgary. It's it's just uh, it's it's good oh. Philly. But no, I'm just I'm really happy that Goudreau is looking as good as he is. And also shout out to Brady Kachuk being the biggest Flames fan in the world right now. I love it. Love the shirts. Oh yeah, they're great. They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The uh, this is you love to see it. You love to see it. Um. Bobby, did you see the, the Flames doing their Flames first goal thing? And Will uh, guest Eric Goodbran- Eric Branson, who, by the way, very quietly has had a really good year and very good playoffs. I think he's a guy we ripped before. Um, well, he's in like Nashville, I think. But he, Daryl Sutter, man, uh, that man is... Um, you just need the right coach for as a door of a, uh, a Goodbranson, yep. a Lucic. And they play on the same <laughs> pair. Yeah, I, that's just needy. Oh, and the Trevor Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot they have Trevor Lewis. I mean, you just uh, it's good, man. And Defoli obviously finally got on the board in that game seven too. Uh, you know, maybe uh, him, him and Lewis are remembering their good old friend, uh, Mister Game Seven, Justin Williams. Always got to find a reason to bring up Justin Williams. By the way, what a great player. Well, I miss I miss Justin Williams every day. Uh, anyway, that's everything for now. Um, Okay, well, not everything, everything, because then that's just everything for, um, you know, playoffs hockey. Okay. Oh, wait, Ottinger, yeah, okay. Alex, I have it, the stat here, but I'll let you, because you you got there first. Want to tell me what Jake Ottinger's goal saved above expected was? 12.6 in seven games. Jacob Markstrom was a 5.7. <laughs> and he's second? And he's second. <laughs> I think Smith was like four. So Markstrom... Markstrom 5.7, more than double for Ottinger. In fact, in game seven, the Flames had 129 shot attempts, 64 saves, a 954 save percentage in those seven games. He also is an RFA this summer, by the way. So (laughs) must I say that was a uh, 2015 Montreal Canadiens uh, performance by the Dallas Stars. I, uh... (laughs) (laughs) You say that again. You say that again. I um, uh, <laughs> say it again. It looked like a 2015 Montreal Canadiens performance for the Dallas Stars. Uh, what do you mean by that, Daniel? You know, out of this world performance from a goalie, but no scoring. That's very. I saw when I saw Carey Price. I have never seen so many comparisons to Carey Price. Like it. You, you know what about Ottinger's performance reminds me of Carey Price. How effortless it looked a lot of times for Ottinger. He's not a fish like Flurry can be, you know. And yes, he has to work on like Broder. He's oh not a guy. Gonna bring up 2015 like that. Holy! <laughs> they What's wasted an MVP here? performance from a goaltender. Yeah, I remember. They should have beaten Tampa in the second round that year. But ah, uh, Palat. No one talks about Bra- like uh, Andre Palat. Trust me. They're going to miss him on this. Like, they're not resigning. Anyway, pull that 20 fin. Pull that being bad. How good you. Um, what we taught you, yeah, Ottinger. Uh, you yeah, have fun Ottinger. signing him. If I'm him, I'm like, listen, you see that Shusterkin deal? You're giving me that right now. Because the stars just stopped playing. It was hilarious how bad they were. Yeah, that, that game did not end well, I think, for the stars. Poor Will. He stayed, stayed, had to had to get up at 6.30 that day, by the way. And he texted me at one point. He's like, I'm going to go to bed. And I'm like, why? He's like, I got to get up for work. 20 minutes later. This is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, the man. I'm happy awesome. for him. Um, but Jake, have fun signing that. Because, okay, what's next for Dallas? Klingberg may be gone. And that money goes to Jake Ottinger. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But, I mean, like, what's going on with Jim Nill? What's going to go on with, um, with Rick Bonus? What's going to happen in Dallas, guys? What's going on with those contracts they signed? Brian Holtby, Ryan Suter. I still can't get over they gave Suter that many years. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's, a, that, that's an odd one. I think they're in this weird stage uh, where, like, similar to St. Louis right now, they just have these – they have the 
older guys, uh, Sagan, Ben Pavelski, I guess let's throw Radulov in there as well. No, Mick, Radulov. Uh, I don't know if we're going to throw him in there. I just, I, he's 35. So I threw him in there. Um, and mixing in with these younger players, you know, Rupe Hintz, Dennis Gurinyanov, uh, Jason Robertson, Miro Heiskanen, uh, Jake Ottinger as well. Obviously, I don't want to forget him. Plus uh, a couple guys who will probably make it within the next couple of years too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we're just going to see the guard uh, change in Dallas and whether that might even include – coaching and general manager who knows so R- radulov is sorry daniel like radulov is probably going to be gone because he was being a healthy right. scratch yeah guriano's future is always a question there because i'm convinced that rick bonus hates him um michael raffle was i wouldn't be surprised if they brought him back just because it's michael raffle and they just they made kachuk <laughs> mad domestikov is destined to be a, a carousel of free agent trade deadline trades like Jason Robertson being up the same year as Ottinger has to hurt. Has to hurt. And then I want to say, is it next year? Oh, no, this was the first year of Haskinen's extension coming in. Yeah. That was yeah. tough. And then Andre Sakara, who I forgot was still playing in the league. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. The like my final thoughts on this is I think we've reached a point with the stars, especially with a lot of the other guys who have the big money getting older, with the young guys wanting that big payday that. I think we're just we're we're done with the stars that they're realizing that they can't just be a team now that just tries to catch a win. You know what I'm talking about? Like, mm-hmm. like maybe they'll will upset you. That's what their biggest hope is right now. I think they really have to look at what they need to do to actually be a legitimate contender. I just want to enjoy watching the stars play because I don't think I have ever once to watch a game watched a game unless I was at it. That I have enjoyed watching Dallas Stars hockey. <laughs> Honestly, they are the most, they are like watching paint dry. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it so much. Again, remember, I didn't watch a single game of Dallas uh, Vegas in the bubble <laughs> because it was when I had my jaw surgery, right? Yeah. And yeah. I was on for the pain liquid morphine. You, you I can only imagine much. the state I would have been in having to watch that series. You'd have been sleeping. I guess what? And guess what, Alex? I was. You were. You see, you didn't, and you I didn't bet it was anything. more entertaining. <laughs> the swelling, the nosebleeds, all of that was more entertaining, I bet, than the Dallas Stars. Oh, my God. 100%. They're, nope. They're just they're not. They're not. Anyway. Tyler anyway. say, How dare he? Fraud. The Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay. So I think it's fair to say Malkin and Latang are gone, right? Let me read you something. I'm going to read you something from 32 Thoughts. Quote, this is thought eight from Elliot Freeman. Love him. The Athletics' Rob Rossi exploded heads in Pittsburgh on Monday by reporting the Penguins' best offer to Chris Letang and Evgeny Malkin were three years and $15 million. Side note, people, uh, that's not 15 per year. That's did, $5 wait, million sorry, did, per year. Oh, okay. I'm like, did people think it was fifteen million? No, I'm just trying to stress to people well, that's a five million dollar AAV. Because what it followed up with that was Sidney Crosby was not impressed, and I'm like, okay, like, did people really think Sidney Crosby wasn't impressed that their general manager offered him fifteen million dollars a year? Uh, oh, you know, that's uh, right. No. Anyway, <laughs> continuing on uh, on the thought. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Elliot continues, uh, I'm always careful with this stuff because negotiations are a moving target, but here's what I've heard. Malkin and the team discussed a three-year term so he could line up with Sidney Crosby, who is also up in three years, I believe, and said that he's going to play at least three more years. Uh, that's me, not, not Elliot, sorry. Uh, continuing, um, but the two sides were far apart on the number. As for Latang, the last I heard was a four-year offer at a bit less than his current average um, salary of seven point two five, and I, even on and I think they talked about it on the podcast too. And he he just he didn't have an exact number. People were saying like six million dollars. I'm like he did not say that exactly, but let's just keep screwing over Elliot. Um, it, it is always messy because you know we remember certain contract talks i just think of gallagher when it was one day it was like ah he's done and he may leave and then the next day the deal was done um yeah. lander and that close how it got like the, the oh, marner man. self was like he turned down seven by 11 and then he signed now <laughs> uh, that kind of stuff, right 
Yeah, um, yeah. But if it's if it is true, now apparently this new ownership group was it Fenway Sports or something mm-hmm. um, are very much like you need to always give a proper reasoning as to why you're making a move, right? Um, if you dare lowball Chris Letang and Evgeny Malkin, like how dare you? Like, like how dare you? But fair, one hundred percent fair, and I'm uh, not maybe so much with Chris Letang, but I don't know if it's just me, and maybe it's just the rumors that keep coming out and out and out. I'm not surprised. Would not be surprised if Evgeny Malkin left. It's it, of the two, it really feels like Evgeny because what was his quote today is like, I want to be here, but if they want younger guys, then that's fine. I also kind of ask, who are the younger guys that are going to be better than Malkin? Uh, but- Samuel Poulin. Also, like, well, I mean, I think if we go back a few years ago, and obviously they sided with Evgeny Malkin, but there was the rumors about butting heads between him and Phil Kessel. It, it, it's just, it seems to me, I, I'll put it like this. It wouldn't surprise me again if he's the one who's not there. Like, I, I think just looking at a health perspective on this too, like what is going to happen with it? Because Malkin, when he does play, is still elite. Yeah, it's just when he plays that's the only problem with it. And Latang, he's had injury problems before too, but he showed this year too that he was consistent in the lineup. Past and few past few seasons, well, yeah, and. I just I just like to think about like what are they gonna do because they still have to pay Brian Rust as well. And maybe that's the sacrifices. If Malkin's gone, you're keeping like you're bringing in Brian Rust. Because it, it seems to be also the Penguins want cap space. Well, who doesn't want cap space nowadays? They're the fourth or fifth team we've heard in the past couple of weeks that want it. I just um it's just I get if you don't like the term, but then there comes that thing of okay, then you give them more on the AAV, but then the Penguins don't want to budge on the AV. Well, guess what? If you want to keep them, you can't just be like, I don't like this side. We're gonna... No, no. There needs to be some meeting in the middle here. I have a great solution that I proposed a few months ago. Trade Matheson to help mm. with the cap space. I agree. I, I, that wasn't my proposal, but I'm sure that would work too. I ruined my bracket. Thanks, Dan. Let, <laughs> let Evgeny Malkin walk and sign oh. Nazem Kadri. Man. Do that would it. be so funny. That's but a- wouldn't it work? Wouldn't it work? Well, because what does Malkin make? Like 7.5 right nine now? Nine and a half. Not, why do I think seven and a half? Idiot. Uh, um, uh, Latang makes 7.25 close. So but- yeah, 9.5. I don't know if Kadri. I think it's fair to say Kadri is going to be in the eights because that's mm-hmm. Zabanajad and all that. Zabanajad, Couturier, round Yeah, there. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Tell me it a work. Guy who's younger. I mean, yeah. listen, I'll, I'll say it like this. If I'm a Penguins fan, I'm freaking out right now because this is legit. Listen, we, we talk about being careful and you don't want to screw yourself cap wise, but there are certain guys where it doesn't matter. And if there are three guys that you're make you're moving heaven and earth for, it's Latang, Crosby, and Malkin. Flurry's a little different, but he's already gone. But he'll be coming um, back. So but yeah, he's coming back. People are saying that, yeah. I know, everyone's saying it now. (laughs) But he said today he wants to stay in Minnesota. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh Until Pittsburgh call. Uh Exactly, exactly. I think he wants to be anywhere that can win and is around where his family are. I think it's fair. But uh, Pittsburgh, man, Pittsburgh. Now, there's a lot of questions there, but it, it really feels like that's it. But well, I, what a heartbreaking yeah, yeah. way for all to end, by the way, too. Those are guys that should never play in another uniform. It would definitely be brutal. But I think let's just hypothetically say both of them walk. Hypothetically, hypothetically. Yeah. Just they could do so much with like that money. Yeah. Hadri and Petrie. That's a <laughs> You can have Petrie, and uh, I guess then they take Latang. I don't even don't don't get him. Don't give him term, Kent. Don't do it. Oh man! You see that Bergeron shot down? That uh, yeah. probably playing uh, anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we can stop those rumors, selfish bastards. 
Come so he's gonna, to, he's gonna sign for go. he's gonna sign for seven hundred thousand on his extension. I, 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 I stay in Boston. I think, I think we've seen. I think we've seen the last of Patrice Bergeron. Yeah. He'll win his last Southie, so he has the most in history. I think he's tied with Bob Gainey. And he'll, I saw a Flames fan actually saying, "Ah, Lindholm," and then nope. everyone came with the analytics. It was like, no. I'll miss Pat, the only likable Bruin to ever exist. <laughs> Except Ray Bork, maybe, but that was a long time ago. Because mm-hmm. like it's, it's 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 Patrice Bergeron. Wait, wait, like Andrew Raycroft. Yeah, that Do doesn't. You know, count. you know what? You <laughs> said maybe Bobby Orr, and I could be like maybe, but then the whole, but then uh, some of the I'd political. Still, like, mm, yeah, Bobby, I no. think I'd still go with Patrice Bergeron. I think there's a legit debate because. Oh, for sure. Okay, it's because it's for obvious reasons. It's Bobby Orr. Yeah. But like, but like, at least for us, I think we can all say, yeah, it's pretty easy, Pat. Yeah, I think uh, the Canada stuff really padded it for me. I just think he, he, he I love Pat Triple. He's just so great. Uh, first ballot. I know we're, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it's fair to say, first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh huh. Yeah. Best two way player to ever play the game. Uh huh. Like, love Pat. Okay. Things here. Oh no! Oh. no. So close. <laughs> Oh, close. So, oh, the mic. Close. Oh, no. Okay, it just doesn't want to... Okay, is it good now? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Go, yeah, go. you're good. Heartbreaking. Okay. Go, 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 go. First off, um, we mentioned that Michael Bunting was a Calder finalist last episode. This one. Uh, we have the Masterton finalists. Uh, so Dan O'Chara, because he is old. Uh, Carey Price, for everything he's gone through this year. And then uh, Kevin Hayes. Uh, obviously, this, again, the Masterton sucks because it's it just just give it to an award to a player. It's so annoying to have to say to have to rank Hayes playing through the death of his brother, Price fighting addiction and a career fate like ending injury potentially, and to Daniel Char who is playing professional hockey at a high level longer than we have been alive. Yeah, like, it's just I hate I hate this award so much. And we're going to fight about it. We're going to fight about it for the next couple months. It makes me sick that Flyers and Habs fans are going to be arguing about this. And I wish we would just not do it, please. Who are the Habs? Yeah, it was Kay Price. And then the Leafs were, what, Jason Spezza? No. Was it? Or was it Simmons? Wayne Simmons. Wasn't it Kasha? Was Oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I love how we both thought of old players. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, no, it was Lady Bing is... uh, Slavin, no. Spurgeon, yeah, Spurgeon. And, and who was the third one? Don't even remember. Uh, by the way, Spurgeon should not be there. Yeah, that's uh, what everyone said. Like, They're like, well, I, I will listen. The votes were in before the playoffs, but it's not. He concussed Christian Dvorak this year. What are we doing? Yeah, but he didn't get a penalty for it, so it doesn't exist. <laughs> Which is funny is because no, uh, Michael Russo, for his exist. article on it, uh, he's like, look away, Blues fans. <laughs> it's just it's so, he's low key dirty. Oh, Slavin should win it though. The slave like Slavin. I love Slavin. Um, it should be Slavin. I also want to mention one more thing with Montreal: mm-hmm. Archery Lekkinen, Corey Perry, Ben Chirot, Brett Kulak, Tyler Toffoli, all through to the second round. So when you want Mike Hoffman next year, pay a first, and you're going to make it to the second round guaranteed. So I uh, guess what if that guarantees? I, I, I feel like it least... was only last year's team that counts. I don't know if it uh, transitions over to this. Yes, team, yes, this it does. Team. Don't don't, don't tell okay. them that. Listen, you go to the poor teams and say that's minimum, minimum four home playoff games because two rounds in case you sweep. You never know, and uh, that's how you sell it. You want to give a first for for four playoff home games? Of course you do, and that's at maximum eight or six. If the if if, if the if the team pays a first round pick for Mike Hoffman, they should, their GM should be fired right away. I am much more, I, I feel a lot more confident about Ben Chirot than I would about Mike Hoffman. But to be fair, we said the same thing about, about uh, Ben Chirot. Curtis, I am waiting for my apology. I don't think you're going to get it. Oh, I was so right, though. Uh, I'm not right about a lot on this show, but um, I was right about that. I'm actually going to wait because I still want Alex to think about this, this press conference with the Leafs. We're going to finish with the Leafs, but before we get there, Pete DeBoer fired in Vegas, guys. How do we feel? It was, hap- was going to happen. Safe Bigger break season for him, I think. Safe to say Leonard's going to come back now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know what 
Yeah. I, I'm not surprised he was fired by the way, but you know, who'd be a great coach for them to bring in to mm-hmm. make that even Robin Barry connection even stronger. Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz. Let's Trotz. remember uh, what three years ago now, I want to say two or three years ago now where he was done in Buffalo and went to the New York Islanders and had a hell of a year. Vesna finalist Masterton winner. Masterton winner. Very right. good. And Barry Trotz was the coach. And I think so far Freeman said Philly's interested, obviously. Winnipeg. I think the Jets, it's already been like confirmed he's interviewed there. Um, and I, I think Elliot said he's hearing whispers about Barry Trotz. Which is, I think if Barry Trotz goes there, I think he's easily the highest paid coach in the league, by the way. No, yeah. Which I want to say, because obviously Quindell's not play coaching, Babcock's not coaching, Claude Julian's not coaching. I think those were three guys that were all, I think they were at one time the three highest paid coaches in the league. Yeah. So I wonder who is the highest paid right now? So that's, that's currently available on Cap Friendly. It is... Todd McClellan at $5 million and Peter LaViolette at 4.9. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, that'll not be interesting. Bad not bad. Uh, not bad at all. Or if <sighs> what are Vegas ruthless, right? Ruthless. What if they get Quinville? What if they yeah, completely they don't care. cross the morality of it and go get Quinville? Would you I be surprised? It. No, it would be off. I don't think anyone could root for the member again. Like if if your team hired him, could you cheer for them anymore? I think that'd be very difficult to do. I'm already having issues cheering for my team, so I mean my... that's that's <laughs> much, Alex. But Alex. yeah, no, no, you're Alex. right. That's my, first, which is my first point. round exit. No, no, I get it's the point I'm making. So yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, Barry Trotz's former associate coach. I think even going back to the Washington days, if I was looking at DB correctly, Lane Lambert is the new Islanders head coach or head coach for the New York Islanders. Uh, apparently this was the new voice. Um, people have talked about the idea of, I think especially Jeff Merrick, I may have heard of him, decent player, a decent, not player, but decent, decent sports player. net guy. Decent radio guy. Heard, never heard of him. Um, I think he dyes his hair though. Like all the sports that guys do. Um, but he, he sort of mentioned the thing of becoming an assistant to becoming a head coach being substitute teacher to the full-time disciplinarian. Um, I'm trying to think of the most recent one. Burnett's kind of working out, and we don't talk about the one in Montreal. Um, but apparently there's a lot of well thought about Lane Lambert. I guess we'll see. And AK, let's see what he can do with Matthew Barzell. Just, yeah, I, I think a key. Oh, no, no, Daniel, go, Daniel, he just, go. I think Lou picked his guy in the system. Um, yeah. Went with a guy that he knew, and he just wanted that that change in voice, but not really. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's interesting that 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 was the choice there. So I know that people are going on about. I think Freeman mentioned thirty two thoughts that the Wild want to keep Kevin Fiala, and then sends. I think somebody said the Sens are interested too, and then people were saying, "Do you trade Shane Pinta?" It was a whole thing going on, right? If you're the Islanders, <laughs> uh, I would go get Kevin Fiala. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. Bill Guerin oh. in his uh, end of the year press conference did mention that, by the way, that there is the interest, but he, he feels like it's unlikely. There's a lot. That's why you have to win this year because your cap situation is going to be awful. Yeah. Absolutely just, awful. just the uh, coaches thing you talk about, uh, assistant coaches going to head coaches. I think there's two prominent ones uh, in the NHL right now. Rick Bonus uh, was assistant coach for the Dallas Stars before being named interim, and then obviously signing. And Craig Berube, who was associate coach, which I'm just going to call assistant coach, um, f- before being named head coach after Mike Yo got fired after predicting it. Uh, who could have seen Mike Yo getting fired after that one? Man. But yeah, so key, two coaches there. Low key, respect to him for calling that. Um, sure. Speaking of that former Dallas job, Jim Montgomery will probably be another sort of candidate out there. I'm rooting for Jim Montgomery because he got help. I'm really yeah. rooting for him. Um, always respect for those kind of. For the There's a lot of coaches out there this summer, right? 
They were yeah. talking about it on 32 Thoughts that the oh. pool is insane. Uh, just, just let me get something to yell into here. Whoa. Where is the Marty San Luis extension? That's Where is it, way. Kent? Where is the St. Louis extension? You better be waiting to announce it at the draft, or I swear. That'd be a great, great idea. That'd be cool, yeah. Before, to announce our pick, please welcome the newly extended head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, Martin St. Louis. Where is it, Kat? We need to know. No one's reporting it because where is it? I need to know. Where is Marty? Bring him back. He whispers to the small bear who scores goals. That's Cole Caulfield, by the way, because he's a bear because he loves climbing trees, eating fish, and eating honey. And scoring goals. Ah, where are they? Anyway, first off, um, shout out to Mitch Marner. Hope he's okay because he got carjacked a couple days ago, um, which is freaking – I have a, 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 a fear of, like, burglaries, like, legit – Never been burglarized, but I have such a fear of it. Um, so I can only imagine what it was like for him. Apparently, he put out a statement. I didn't get to read it because it was I, I saw it right before we came on. Um, but good to see he's okay. Um, but man, that was I feel bad for him. I feel really bad for him. Yeah. yeah. I'm, are we gonna? Are we yeah, sure? So, should we credit where we got that from? Are we sure we know where oh we got that God. from? I just I want to be clear. <laughs> Where we got that? Oh, you didn't see the tweet. You didn't oh, see yeah, the tweet, Adam. I saw the tweet. No. Oh, so Daniel what have I missed? It. Well, Adam, our good friends at the Toronto Sun reported on this. They were oh. they got the exclusive, the exclusive uh, report on this one. And uh, our other good friends along at TSN um, re- posted something about it. And uh not, uh, and what? Steve Simmons th- decided to quote tweet it and say something along the lines of, I'll pull it up now, but it was yeah. something. Of, I remember folk. He said folks. He said folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Um, okay. He said, come on, where is it? Where is it? Folks, it was a Toronto Sun story. Please credit accordingly. Oh, God. take a hike. <laughs> Actually, take a wow. Okay, I mean, you already you already angered Matthews when you went on about his COVID status, and now you want to go. Uh, what a loser! Um, I don't. It's like not that. even about angering the Leafs players. I couldn't care less. That's in a sense kind of your job, but you go out of your way every single time. I'm not going to get mad about it. You go out of your way every single time. Did, to did do he at least stuff say, like did he say like, I hope Mitch is okay. Probably not, not in that particular tweet. Okay. I maybe I didn't go read the Toronto sun story. I actually, yeah. I haven't read a single story about it because I just, I feel bad for Mitch Marner and like, I hope he's okay. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean this with all due respect. I just, what do you want to tell me about Mitch Marner right now? Like uh, God, uh, all I, it should be. Mitch Marner's car was was carjacked, and he's okay. End of story. I just saw that Mike sent it to us, and he said it was Marner. I'm like, wait, what? And then I saw sports, and I didn't know it was the son. That I, I don't know. That's that's weird, man. Okay, now can we Fight move on that. to the important stuff? Yeah. Right. Um. So I don't know. I okay. Never mind. Oh, I hit my mic again. This is a problem. That's okay. What um, were you gonna say? So the Leafs had their end of meeting, end of the end of the conference. Okay, it just doesn't. Just work. I'll do. Just fix it while. Uh, no, it's 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 being. It's done, done for the day. Okay. okay. We're done with it. It's, it's, it's done for the day. It's kind of no okay. So the Leafs had their end of year press conferences, locker clean out day, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna hold my mic like I'm pretending that I just turned my Xbox on somehow. Okay. Nice. Never mind. Um. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I saw a tweet. I think it was from Luke Fox. Mm. Luke Fox writes about the Leafs, so I can excuse this, but I still thought it was a little silly. Because he was quoting Austin Matthews, right? And he just put in brackets UFA 2024. Oh, you want to start with that? Okay. I do. I do. For those of you who who don't know what that means, uh, 2024 is when Austin Matthews is an unrestricted free agent. I... Stop it. Please don't do this. 
I have this conversation next year. I'm okay with not now. Yeah, a <laughs> hundred. Okay, let's just let's just give it a few days. Not even no. Can we just can we give it like a month, a month, two weeks? It's not too much. Two weeks before Daniel. we start pulling this game. Are you serious? Daniel was quoting about we feel sorry. we're close. Shut up. Wait, like, sorry. Just can I just one thing I've been holding in for like the past two weeks since they all eliminated. You have no right to say you're close when you haven't won a round since two. But that was the question. But that's the, I'm going to, I'll defend them on this. That's the questioning. That's not that. That's the questioning. That's not, that's the questioning. And that's the BS media. And you know what? Uh, Let's start. Let's start okay. with the media. Okay. I'm already yeah. angry. I just want to say you know what? You know what? Thing is That's dumb. fine. That 20 I'm because I, I may get to that too. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Everyone bitches and complains in this country that they want Toronto. They want the same coverage as Toronto. <laughs> damn it. Have it. I damn it. I, I almost were there. Damn it. I hope you get it one day. And I hope you suffer the same way that I do on a constant, constant, constant basis. It is Bush League. I am done with it. It is embarrassing. I've never been more embarrassed of Toronto media in my life. In my life. I usually let you guys do a lot of the complaining about that. I'm here for it today because it was absolutely bizarre. You know, what was really what really annoyed me about um, the Sunday before the Rangers game seven is they. <laughs> so Sportsnet clearly had a video package ready and donovan i think it's donovan mitchell or Do- is it no donovan no, bennett donovan, donovan bennett. bennett donovan mitchell is a very different person isn't he? is he a basketball, basketball player? player on the utah yeah. jazz yeah okay sorry so donovan bennett, bennett did this voiceover right and it's like talking about since 2004 and it, it just feels like there's this awkward sort of cut where it's like there's always next year always keep believing and i'm like wait a minute like, this was the day after the Leafs had lost. I'm like, I tweeted this. I said, we have two game sevens tonight. And we're recapping the Leafs loss from last night. Like, like you have all week the Justin, the Jeff Merrick show. You got the Justin Bourne and, and, and Kipper doing their thing. Like, can we just stop for I, one second? I this don't is- even want that. Leave me alone. Leave <laughs> me alone. Does anyone know the word context in this city? Have we lost? You know what's great about journalism at its core? That it, most of the time, it should provide context. We've lost it. I feel like I'm watching a political debate 24 7. By the way, let's start. I do have something to say about that. No politics in sports. Unless it's an election ad. Again, come right on in. That's just my pet peeve. Um, I didn't hear the <laughs> boomers complaining. I didn't. This message is brought to you by Andrew no, Horvath. No, screw everyone. Screw Doug Ford. Screw D- Stephen Del Duca. Steve, Andrew Horvath. I don't care. Leave me alone for one day. Hi, Alex. This is Andrew Horvath. Oh. Alex, Believe. don't look at my last few stories for CGRU then. No, just, but, that, but Daniel, stuff. that's yeah, reasonable. Yeah. That's <laughs> not <laughs> like that's reasonable. Okay, I got <laughs> off track there. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> it goes from Leafs thing the day after game seven before a Rangers game seven, right? Um, then it'll go to Cabby sports betting odds. And then you go to the panel talking about their, those sports betting odds. Then we go to the game and there's more sports betting odds. And Andrew Horvath, I, Doug Ford, Doug, get it, Doug. I don't care, Doug. Leave me alone. Yeah, Doug, I don't think you're going to get it done. Neither are the other two. Just leave me alone, please. I remember but, when that restaurant opened and he didn't have the COVID license or whatever, and he just kind of pat on the back, it's okay. And then he reopened the next day because. <laughs> okay, let me get back to what I was Probably saying. Stuck. I I lost track of, of, of what I was saying. It was like watching, reading politicians. There is no context provided to what you are saying. I, you know who had it? I thought actually spot on the Steve Dangle podcast. And I'll explain why and I'll explain why, because they, they said, Hey, they lost. That's bad. 
there's probably a little bit of change that needs to happen and there's going to be change that happened. But you know what they also outlined? They also outlined the fact that they lost to the damn back-to-back Stanley Cup champions. Stop disrespecting the back-to-back Stanley Cup champions. John Cooper, who should be winning, who should have more than one um, head coach of the year award. I forgot the name of the award. And Jack Adams. Jack Adams and Julian Breesbaugh, who sh- is going to win the damn uh, GM of the year award. Stop disrespecting them like that. Also, Andre Vasilevsky is an absolute beast. I don't want to hear that Andre Vasilevsky was making saves and then Jack Campbell had to make saves. Andre Vasilevsky is the best damn goalie in the world. Stop Andre, I'll to- say it again. I'll say it again. Igor Shosturkin is going to win the Vesna this year, but Andre Vasilevsky is the best goalie in the world. And he proved it. And he's going to prove it against Florida. Then he's going to prove it against New York or Carolina. And then he's probably going to prove it again against Colorado. Anyone, by the way, saying that uh, Campbell was as good as Vasilevsky did not watch game six and seven, by the way. Who said, who said that? Who's saying that? I haven't seen any of that. Please said that. To SDP me. guys. They were like, they said, I, I almost lost. He's like, Against Price and Vasilevsky, Campbell was at their level, and I nearly threw my battery. That's wrong. Him. Okay, that's and the one like, point they were wrong on. did not watch it. That's the one point they were wrong on. But I thought the way they handle it was 10 times better than the other people who were just – and they know who they are. They know who they are. They know what they're doing out there. Where the, the people just yelling and screaming about nonsensical things that make no sense. That make no sense provided context. If you provide that context, it's crazy. Listen, I'm a I'm I'm a Leafs homer. I'll tell you that from day one. From day one. But I'm realistic. I like to provide context to my arguments. If you are out there and are saying that people should be fired, if you're a fan, go right ahead. You say that damn thing and you don't provide context with it because that's your job. If you are someone who gets paid to write about this stuff say this person needs to get fired. And I want to, in that damn article, the context for it, and then I'll do you one better. I want you to tell me who they should hire that's available. Because if you're just saying things, just like Brendan Shanahan said, and I think it's the it's a quote, and I think it's reasonable. You do not make change for the sake of making change. That never ever works. Can we also go one week without mentioning the Kawhi Leonard trade? In the, reference to the Leafs? Yeah, I don't get the why that's a disrespect to the Toronto Raptors. I swear to work. God, yeah. I did also, it last year. Also, you just don't go out and find a disgruntled former finals MVP who's fallen out of love with the franchise he played for. It's There's kind of a second side to that. It's not just, hey, they went out and just got a guy and traded the fan. There's a lot that happened there. I yeah. Like, I'm listen, I'm, I'm a casual NBA fan, but even though I know that, no, can we stop? That, that's disrespectful to the Toronto Raptors and the work they put in. I'm not saying the, like, the Leafs maybe will get there one day. They are not there right now, and they do not deserve that. Don't the Kawhi trade. Get out of here. Give me a break. That's a load of baloney. Honestly, come on. I said it last. They did the same thing last year. They said, we're going to make the Kawhi trade. I'm going to, they say it one more year. I'm going to lose it. I mean, I'm already losing it. But I just, like, I don't make a this Kawhi is- trade. David Camp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, what, I know. I just, I don't like the comparable. The trade. This is just my opinion, but when you talk about those major trades and it comes to like the rosters, the picks and everything, um, basketball is never comparable. Like maybe baseball to hockey, but it's never, it's never comparable. I, I don't, I don't see it this way. Both sports have commissioners that don't like the game that they manage uh, with, with, with Mr. Manford and Mr. Mr. Bettman. Um, funny you mentioned that Donald asked me the other day. He's like, Adam, like Donald, he's like, do draft picks matter in the NHL? NHL? Like, yeah. I'm like, listen, you know, you throw around mid round picks, like nothing for depth and like seconds are kind of like those big chips, but like, this deadline was weird because it was the first time you've seen that many first round picks, but it's like Paul George, I'm going to go to the Clippers. They're going to give up all the first round picks in the world or it's like the NHL would trade all these draft picks for value contracts nowadays. Um, when the NA, when the NBA is just like, no, we're going to splash again. It's, it's, it's such a, it's, it just feels like it's such an inner Toronto thing where it's like, this is just not comparable. I think with, and this is my opinion, that just for what I'm seeing from the other sports is I think what Donald's saying, because with the NBA, 
like depending on the year, if you're not in the top 10, it doesn't really matter if you have that first round pick, unless you know, you're going to hit on it Mm -hmm. or you're going to be willing to develop guys. I think with the NHL, it's kind of different because you could store the guys in the minors. You could store them in the junior team or abroad. And then it's the same thing with baseball. Like you don't have to bring them up right away. So you never know that like a guy in like the fifth round is actually a franchise player later on. But with basketball, it's more of, if we're in it to win it, like unless we're not getting a top three pick, it doesn't matter. Kale McCarr, NHL ready. I'm just gonna go chill in ball in uh, in college right now. Yeah. And it's like I asked Will. I'm like Donald, how many rounds are in the NBA draft? I think he said two. And I'm like, what? It's only that little. I'm like, okay, well, foul. NHL's 50 roster dead. It made sense, but I'm like, that feels. So I'm like, yeah. And I saw this big story. Was like I was watching um the the, the actually me things with a uh, with um Jimmy Butler. And it was like, how is he that good? And he was 29th overall. I'm like, what? what? No, he's 30th. 30th. I'm like, yeah. I'm like 30th. That's, I'm, I, but I was thinking with the NHL mind, I'm like, if you got a really good player, like if you got like a top line player, and Jimmy Butler is, I think, a bit more, he's not like top five, but he's a damn good player, right? Yeah. But I'm like, if you got that in like 30th overall in the NHL, it'd be a good pick and a steal, but it wouldn't be like, Yo, it wouldn't be earth shattering, but I guess yeah. when you only have like 60 picks, it's a little different, right? But it's also, yeah. um, I think like before we get back to hockey, I think just one example too is with the G League. It's not, it's what it is now, it's not what it was before, where it was mm. like if you're an NBA caliber player, you rarely go to the, the G League, which was used to be called the D League, um, to develop. And I think the Raptors have been like the forerunners of yeah. that development process. So you're seeing more of it, but at the same time, like you, when you draft a guy, you have to have him on the roster. So mm-hmm. that's the thing. And now you know where they can go develop in the CEBL yeah. company yes. man, right Night here. Sorry, I had to do it. I had to. Do it. I love it. Two on one podcast does that. Some and the zoo, the game and in the zoo. We are zoo. Def- apparently there's an overnight camping thing at the zoo. We're doing oh, okay. um, <laughs> that's where the advertisement money is going to. Um, <laughs> uh, just out, by the way, um, I was going to ask something. I can't remember um, the Montreal team. What are they called? The Montreal Alliance. Well, that's an awful name. That's a bad the alliance name. between the French Canadians and the English Canadians. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an alliance. I uh, that's maybe uh, that's not Alex. Not sure. That's not. Alex Nighthawks talking at his Adam thoughts of my own as people yeah, would say on Twitter. Um, anything, edit that out if you want, Alex. No, no, um, no, and matter. transition <laughs> transition in three, two, one. Uh, anything else about Toronto media we want to talk about? Yeah, get better. <laughs> get, like, honestly. Like, can we do a better job? Like, just just do better, honestly. I'm just, I can't, I can't, do you understand? I think you guys understand this because I think especially with the, we went through the Marner saga, the podcast went through the Marner saga. I'm not doing it again. It was like our first full season. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. yeah like, I hated that. I'm if we're going to do this for the next, the doomsday clock also, that might that like, the, are you kidding me? Grow up, what, grow up. It makes me think of how do you think Milwaukee fans thought when it was like everyone in Toronto was like, we're getting you all this voice. And then it was, no, you're not. Uh, can that's, I ask that's how a, I, I wonder how you must feel right now. Can I can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. When after McDavid's ELC, they made the playoffs once. Was there this much talk? Like, am I what am I missing? Am I missing something here? Like I think like, the past two years we have that discussion at the start of the year. If they don't win, he's gonna want out. Uh huh. But I think that's fair. Really, at least here in in the GTA, that's all we really ever talk about. And then we leave Connor alone for a while, and we'll make the jokes. But it's not the Edmonton media never really feel that. Instead, they just go after Jesse Fully Harvey for some reason. But <laughs> and the coach, and why blame the general manager for anything? Yeah, yeah. No, I've. Mm. That's a very good point. Mm. And you know, you know what's unfortunate? Ken Holland probably has a job now for the rest of it. And he's going to trade Chipotle Harvey so they can keep Evander Kane. Mm, yeah. That's going to be crazy. I've never right. been more frustrated. No, I mean, that'd be crazy. Yeah, that oh, it's going to happen. Watch. Yeah. I've never Watch. been more frustrated before. Honestly, I just, you know what? You want the coverage? Please take it. I don't want any more. 
I don't want any more. It's like 75% of this. I can't do it. It's just, it's tiring. And with that, yeah. we will be going. Uh, who's winning game one, New York, Carolina? New York, 5-4. Uh, five, four. Game winner? Four. Um, it will be Capo Caco. Nice. Alex? Um, I'm going to say it is 3-1 New York. The third goal is going to be an empty. Empty netter, 3-1 New York. Who has the game winner? Uh, I'm going to go with Kevin Panarin. Your mic cut out? I don't know what you said, Alex. Kevin Panarin. Panarin. Okay, okay. He says Panarin. Uh, it only just cut out when you gave your prediction. That's why I'm reading it back. Okay. Um, and mine will be, I still think the Rangers are going to win because I want them to, but the first game will go to Carolina, home ice, obviously. I'm saying 4-2, fourth goal into another. The game winner, he's yet to score. I don't think he has a point in this series. Uh, yes, Barry Cock in the Emmy. Don't even wow. know he's playing. Can, can I, he's a playoff I, performer. He needs to start playing better. Can I ask, do you actually want them to win or – is it or Doc and Yami signed Mike. the contract with another team? I don't know. No, I don't no. Oh, I didn't D'Angelo. even think about I didn't even think about Cock and Yami. And and no, D'Angelo I was just thinking, I okay, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about Mike. Six point. It wasn't that it wasn't that yeah, deep. Here's the thing it I don't think Mike. Chris Kreider meant to destroy Carrie the way he did. I don't know. I know oh. he, he's not that bad of a person. When uh, D'Angelo is there's a reason what's been chanted at him has been chanted at him. You would you think he likes hanging out in uh in uh oh. in uh in like tattoo parlors or parlors of any other kind? You wonder? I, 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 I was just asking oh, because cool. of like I was just uh, asking because of uh, like, uh, tattoo it parlors, deep, ice cream was... parlors. Tony D'Angelo was... loves frequently and all those all the parlors. Oh, you were right. Uh Kakinyemi has zero. He I don't know it doesn't really matter too much. He has a minus four, two penalty minutes, and he's only made he's only taken eight shots. He, he's been like fourth, which, it, it, you know, death row, but like that is a playoff performer. It's very strange to me why he hasn't scored yet, but we'll see. Um, but again, they'll take game one and we'll go from there. Okay, that's everything. Uh, thank you for watching, listening, wherever you're listening with all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you Sunday. Uh, wait, uh, well, you may we'll see, see Adam. Me and, you may see me and someone else, but the fellows will be busy. Um, yeah. Uh, Daniel's going to be a game two of Calgary at Edmonton, so we may see some face punching and whatnot. Take lots of pictures and videos for us, please. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, and I don't know, Baumgartner may be on, Mike may be here. We don't know yet. Um, but I think um, you should have Mike on, and you guys should just yell for an hour. <laughs> I would be okay with that. And he just yelled, go oh, oh. over here. Okay, and we'll, yeah, and we'll figure it out. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Bye, guys.